Some powerful new features just drop in Photoshop in the April release at Adobe Max London, and they're all about saving time and working smarter. In this video, I'll show you all my favorite new features. Keep in mind that the first four features I will share with you are included in the full release of Photoshop, and the last two are in the Photoshop beta. My name is Jesus Ramirez, let's get started. If you're tired of spending too much time refining tricky selections like hair, clothing, or accessories, then I'm sure you'll love Photoshop's new Select Detail feature inside of the Object Selection tool. It completely speeds up the selection process. Photoshop will automatically analyze the contents of this image and you can hover over it. You'll see the pink overlays over the areas that Photoshop finds. For example, if you wanted to select these jeans, we can hover over them and click and Photoshop automatically makes a selection. Best of all, you can select facial features just by hovering over faces. For example, when I hover over the little boy's face, you'll see that I can select eyes, nose, mouth, eyebrows, and even hair. You might also notice that there's a new dropdown called Select People. When you click on that, you will see everyone's face in these circles. When you click on a person's circle, the entire person button is active by default and you can click on Apply to make a selection around their body. I'll go back into the select people button and you can also select two people at a time simply by clicking on their faces. Notice the blue circles around them. Entire person is active and I can click on apply and that makes a selection out of two people at a time. And of course, you can click on both people and only select one part of their body. In this case, I can select teeth. So it selects the teeth on the mom and the son. I'll click on apply and you'll see the selection around their teeth. With a selection active, you can of course create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. This adjustment layer is now targeting both their teeth and I can reduce the saturation and increase lightness to brighten their teeth. I'll delete the hue and saturation adjustment layer and now let me show you how smart Photoshop is. I can hover over her and click under lower clothes and Photoshop knows that these are her legs and that is part of her lower clothes. I'll click on her circle to disable it and then I'll click on this man's circle and you'll notice that Photoshop is smart enough to detect his hat and his coat. He's wearing a vest so Photoshop calls it a coat and I can click on apply and now I have his coat selected. The selections may not be pixel perfect, but they're really good. If you want to learn more about the detail detection feature, I have a video where I share all its capabilities. The link is below in the description. Changing colors in Photoshop just got way easier. The new adjustment color feature allows you to easily adjust the most prominent colors in your image. Let me show you how it works. The new adjust colors feature found here in the taskbar allows you to quickly control the most prominent colors in your image. These are the six colors that Photoshop found to be the most prominent in this photo. And to edit one, all you need to do is click on it. That will expand these three sliders, which means I can use them to control the blue that I clicked on. In this case, her clothing because she's wearing blue denim. Hue controls the color of the selected blue, so we can make it red. Saturation controls the intensity. And lightness, of course, controls the brightness. And you probably noticed that this adjustment created a hue and saturation adjustment layer. If you need more control, you can go into the properties panel. And one of the things that you can control is the range of the colors affected. So if I wanted to target more blues, I need to spread these vertical sliders apart to include as much blue as possible inside of them. And keep an eye on the gradient. The gradient on top shows you the original color. You can see how it's blue. And the gradient below shows you the result. Notice how it turned red where the blue used to be. Again, this is an adjustment layer and it contains a layer mask. So notice that I affected the blues in the background. If I don't want to do that, what I can do is select the layer mask and make it completely black by inverting it. You can click on the invert button. Then with the brush tool, you can paint with white on the areas where you want this color effect to take place. In this case, I'm just going to brush over her clothes and this looks fantastic. I'll delete the layer mask just to show you another feature. If you wanted to target a color that did not show up in your prominent colors, what you can do is click on a color that you don't think you'll use. For example, this one, I don't think I'm going to use this one for anything. And then I can click on the eyedropper tool and click on a color that you want to adjust. For example, in this case, I want to adjust the green found back here. When you click and hold, you can see on that circle the color that you're selecting and that's exactly the green that I want to target. 
Now with the screen selected, I can use the hue and saturation adjustment layers to control that green. And you can see how that green is affected in the background when I adjust these sliders. Also, I'm going to expand the panel just so that you can see better. You can think of these swatches as presets here in the hue selector sliders. So when I click on the yellow, the sliders move and you can see the vertical handles are right where that yellow is. So that's all these swatches are. You range presets based on the most prominent colors in your image. If you want to get the most out of the new adjust colors feature, I've got a full video on the hue and saturation adjustment. The link is below in the description. There are lots of tips and tricks there. Next, I'll show you the composition reference setting in Photoshop's text to image feature, which allows you to use a reference photo to guide the layout or arrangement of your generated images. It's perfect for visualizing ideas when describing the composition is tricky. To start, let me show you the text to image feature. I'll click on this icon here, which will bring up the generate image command. The latest setting added is this one here, composition. We'll come back to it in just a moment. For now, I'm just going to type a prompt. The prompt is pile of old broken wood with moss and flowers on a gray background. And I'll use the photo content type so that I generate a photorealistic image rather than an illustration. And I'll simply click on generate. And in just a few moments, Photoshop will give me three variations based on my prompt. And the results are fantastic. It's exactly what I asked for. But what if I wanted these piles of wood rearranged in a certain way? Well, that's where the new composition setting comes into play. Instead of clicking on the text to image icon in the toolbar, now that I have a generative layer, I can simply click on this icon in the properties panel to load either a style reference, which influences the look and feel of your generated image, or a composition reference, which influences the layout or arrangement of your generated images. And this is a new feature and the one that we will use. You can use one of the provided images in the gallery, but it's better to upload your own. So I will click on the choose image button. And from here, I have this black X. I'll click on it and hit open. This is simply an image of a black X on a white background. The strength is all the way to the right. And all I'm going to do now is click on the generate button. Photoshop will now work on this image and it will use that X as a layout reference. And look at the result. It's an X with exactly what I asked for, a pile of wood with moss and flowers, and all the results are just incredible. It's a powerful new feature, it's great for designers working with logos, and also great for generating your own assets when compositing. You can definitely generate assets you won't find in any stock photography website. By the way, if you learned something new, make sure to like and subscribe. Let me now show you the improved select subject and remove background buttons with cloud processing. This feature enhances capabilities through cloud technology, allowing for more precise selections, even with subjects that have complex edges and fine details. Let me show you how this works. We have the select subject button here and the remove background button. They both use the same technology. This one gives me a selection and this one gives me a mask. I'm going to click on the remove background feature. The mask will give us a better visual representation. As you can see, Photoshop did a fantastic job keeping the main subject, in this case, the bridge. But let me show you what the mask looks like. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the mask thumbnail. And you can see this incredible selection Photoshop made in just a couple seconds. It's truly incredible. Now let me show you this same feature without using cloud processing. I'll press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the layer. And I'll delete the layer mask from the layer on top. And I'm going to press Ctrl K on Windows, Command K on the Mac to bring up the preferences panel. Under image processing, I'm going to change the default for select subject and remove background from cloud to device. And I'll press OK. Now I'll click on the remove background button once again, and you'll see the difference. It's night and day. I'll hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask thumbnail so you can see the difference. This is processed in my device, and this was processed using the Adobe Cloud servers. It is so much better, there's no contest. So I would definitely encourage you to use the cloud option so that Photoshop processes your selections and their servers. By the way, sending your images to the cloud does not save them on Adobe servers, and it does not help train their generative AI. This is just to make a better selection. Let me now show you how this feature works with a portrait, especially with difficult to select hair. I'm going to click on the remove background button and in just a few seconds, you'll see the result 
It is good, but it may not look like it. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask. And as you can see, the mask is actually quite good. The problem is that his hair was too fine and we're getting a lot of the background. But we can easily fix that in Photoshop. And as amazing as these tools are, there's rarely a one-click solution. So you do need to bring traditional skills to enhance these automatic tools. So I'm going to start by enabling the Selection Brush tool. And I'm just going to select around this hair like so I'm just going to loop around. Once I come back to where I started, Photoshop will fill in the rest. Then with the portrait layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the contents of that selection. And I'll press Ctrl Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask. Now the contents of the layer below control the visibility of the layer on top. I'll go into the move tool. I have show transform handles enabled and I'm just going to hold Alt and Shift and scale to make this layer larger. And I'm going to move it around and I'll try to hide as much of the white as possible. Then I can right click and choose warp and I can continue warping the image again to try to hide as much of the white as possible. And at some point it may be completely impossible to hide every single piece of white, but that's okay. Just do as best as you can. Remember you can add a split. So maybe I can click on this icon here for a vertical split and I can drag over to get more controls, but it might not make a huge difference in this case. Then I'm going to click on done and I'll hold Alt on Windows option in the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask, which will hide the contents of the layer. Then with the brush tool using a larger soft brush, I'm going to paint with white to reveal those edges and notice that this now is showing me how good that mask really is. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but we can fine tune it in just a moment. So I'm just getting the edges and making sure that this shows up as best as possible. The next step is to create one more layer. Press Ctrl Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask and have the visibility of the portrait control this layer as well. Then enable the clone tool and hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and click to set a sample source and then continue hiding the white areas. I'll repeat this process until all the white areas are completely hidden. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. His hair looks fantastic. I'm going to tap on the Z key to enable the zoom tool and I'll zoom in and you can see how good that mask really is. It looks fantastic. So I highly recommend that you use these new features alongside traditional tools and techniques to get the best results possible in Photoshop. Let's now look at two Photoshop beta updates. First, Let's discuss the Improve Remove tool, which features a new generation AI model to enhance the quality, accuracy, and speed when removing content and blending specific areas. There's no setting you need to enable. The new model is on by default. So with the Remove tool, you can simply loop around any object that you want to remove. Photoshop will then fill in the rest. And if you have Remove after each stroke enabled, Photoshop will immediately remove that object. And it does a fantastic job, as you can see. I can even remove the tears from his jeans. All I'm doing is dragging over those tears and Photoshop removes them automatically. There's also a new button added when you have a selection active. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and just make a selection around this sign back here. And notice that I now have this remove button here in the taskbar. When I click on that, Photoshop will apply the remove tool to the contents of the selection. And again, Photoshop does an amazing job. Let's now discuss the second update to the Photoshop beta, and that is the new Actions panel. Under Window, you can choose Actions. If the old Actions panel opens up, this is what it looks like, then go into the Flyout menu and select Actions. This is what you should be seeing right now, the brand new Actions panel. The first five results in this panel are suggestions that Photoshop gives you specific to this image. Best of all, we don't have to click on the action to apply it. If you see this icon, that means that you can simply hover over the action and Photoshop will give us a live preview. In the layers panel, you will see the layers that will be added. And of course, you will see the preview over the canvas. If you don't like any of the suggested actions, you can hover over the space. When this icon appears, you can click on it to refresh the results. And Photoshop will load five additional actions. 
You can hover over the ones you can preview and see how they affect your image. After clicking on this icon three times, Photoshop will reanalyze the image, that's what it was doing there, and it will suggest five new actions. Next, let's look at the search feature in this panel, and for that, I'm going to use this image. This photo has distracting wires, and I know that there is an action that removes wires. So from the search bar, I can simply type in the word remove, and Photoshop will show me actions with the word remove, and this is the one I want, remove distracting wires. I'll click on it to apply it. The results are fantastic and they were placed in a new layer. If you don't know what all the actions in here are, that's okay. All you need to do is simply press the space bar, create a space, and you will see a list of most actions, at least the ones that have a space in between words. This is basically the only way right now to see what all the available actions are. By the way, you might have noticed that the actions that are in color here are actions that were part of the original actions panel. So if you have legacy actions installed, you will be able to see them on this list and search for them in the search bar. I can click on the X to close the search and one more time to go back into this home panel. Something else that I wanted to point out is that at the moment, you cannot create new actions. Look at this new actions button here. It's currently disabled. Adobe will enable it in the future when we can add actions to it. So if you want to create an action or edit an older action, what you need to do is go back into the classic actions view and then work on your actions from here. The new actions panel does not allow you to create actions just yet, but the icon is here and that is coming. And by the way, when you hover over this icon long enough, you'll see a tooltip describing what I just told you. To show this next feature, I'm going to delete that layer that removed the wires, and I'm going to look for an action by simply typing the word black. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and select this one, black and white, warm. When I click on it, as you would expect, Photoshop applies all these layers, creating this look. I'm going to delete this for now. And now let me show you the new feature. You can click on the three dot icon, but better yet, you can right click anywhere on the action and you get three options to play the action, which is the same thing as clicking on the action, or apply the action, but only to the subject. When I click on that, you'll see that that black and white worm look only affects my main subject. And I can do the opposite. I can go back into that action, right click, and choose apply on background to apply that black and white worm look only to the background. For this next feature, we'll use this image. And from the search bar, I'm simply going to type the word landscape. I'll scroll down and we're going to use this action here, black and white. But before I do anything, I'm going to move the actions panel over to the side and I'm going to go into window and choose history. So I have the actions panel and the history panel right next to each other. I'm going to scroll down and I'll apply the landscape black and white. I'll click on it and notice that in the history panel, I applied this action in one single history state. That means that if I press Control Z on Windows, Command Z on the Mac to undo, I go back to the beginning and I can press Control Shift Z to go forward one step and it applies that action, including all its contents, the group and the adjustment layer and the renaming of this group. This was not the default in previous versions of Photoshop. What you would see instead is every single step that the action took listed in the history panel. And that is something that is very beneficial in certain workflows. Let me show you how to change the settings so that you can see all the steps of an action in the history panel. First, you need to go into your actions panel, click on the flyout menu and go back into the classic actions. In the classic actions panel, click on the flyout menu again and go down to playback options. From here, you'll see this checkbox in the history section, create a single history state. When you uncheck that, you will see all the steps of the action in the history panel. I'll press OK. I'll change the actions panel back to the new actions panel, and I'll delete the landscape group created by the previous action. And notice that that history state was added, that I deleted the group. And when I click on that same landscape black and white action, all the steps will show in the history panel. Whereas before, it only added one single history state. So now if I press Control Z to undo, I'm just going to go back one step in that action. See that? See how I'm just going back until I get to the beginning. 
Remember, this is not default. If you need your actions to display all the history states after you apply them, you do have to change the setting. And if you've made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe.